Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today we will discuss the controversial topic of whether aborted fetal tissue or human body parts are being used to develop the new RNA COVID-19 vaccines. As a Christian, I'm pro-life and therefore have concerns about any connection between abortion and the development of vaccines. First, I want to explain what using, quote, fetal cell lines means and what it doesn't mean. Fetal tissue can be used in biomedical research, though they're more often connected to the creation of immortalized cell lines. Immortalized cell lines are established by culturing fetal cells in such a way that they continue growing and multiplying in laboratory dishes indefinitely. These fetal cells can then be used in many ways for research. An often used immortalized cell line is known as HEC-293. These cells were obtained from the kidney cells of a female baby, either through spontaneous miscarriage or an elective abortion in the 1970s in the Netherlands. Records about the origin of these cells have been lost, so we don't know specifically how these cells were obtained, but the assumption is that they were obtained through an elective abortion on or around the year 1972. HEC stands for Human Embryonic Cells, and the 293 is because this was the 293rd experiment that the particular scientists had done, hence the name HEC-293. HEC-293 cells are some of the most commonly used cell lines in laboratories across the globe. None of the COVID-19 vaccines in development have used cells from recent abortions, but many of them have used fetal cell lines in their development or production. So, how did Moderna and Pfizer use fetal cell lines? The good news is that both Moderna and Pfizer's COVID-19 RNA vaccines do not actively use fetal cell lines in the ongoing production of their vaccines, but small portions of development and testing used the HEC-293 fetal cell line. For example, Moderna collaborators used HEC-293 cells to produce the viral spike protein to test its shape and antibody binding. This still may pose an ethical dilemma for Christians. A 2005 document from the Catholic Pontifical Academy for Life considered the moral issues surrounding vaccines prepared in cell lines descended from aborted fetuses. The Vatican group concluded that it can be both morally permissible and morally responsible for Catholics to use these vaccines. And recently, the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops recently distributed a memo to all U.S. bishops stating that the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are considered ethically sound and, quote, it's morally permissible to accept vaccination when there are no alternatives and there's a serious risk to health. And at this time, there are no other alternatives to Pfizer and Moderna's vaccines. A good article about the ethics behind fetal cell lines is found at the Gospel Coalition. I'll put a link to the article in the description. In that article, Joe Carter writes, quote, Currently, the use in biomedical research of immortalized cell lines derived from fetal tissue is not increasing the number of abortions that are being carried out every year. As David Prentice, Vice President and Research Director of the Pro-Life Charlotte Lozier Institute says, quote, we would prefer they not use the controversial cell line, even in the testing, because there are other alternatives, but that testing on the side doesn't affect me in terms of the recipient of the drug. Furthermore, ethicist Christopher O. Tollefson adds, quote, because researchers may ethically use the HEC cell lines to develop vaccines, people can, of course, ethically use a vaccine should it be developed from the HEC cell line. As more COVID vaccines are developed, some are actively using the fetal cell lines in their production. If you would like more information on which vaccines use aborted fetal cell lines, I encourage you to visit the Charlotte Lozier Institute, and I've put a link in the description. This is such a personal decision, one that each person needs to make on their own conscience. Thanks again for joining me.